Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then I'm Shivani. In today's video, I will be talking about how much I have loved this one book. Yes, I have loved this. I am in love with this one book known as Tuesdays with Mori by Mitch Album. And this talks about what he learned or the time that he has spent with one of his favorite professors known as uh, Morris and he was a sociology professor in Brandeis University. This is a true story and it's a self-help book. So the thing about self-help books is that you cannot just read self-help books. You have to incorporate into your lives what you have learned from that book. So I have my laptop with my notes on that I'll be referring to in between. So if I am looking a little bit towards my laptop that just means that i just don't want to miss on any of the important topics that i have to cover in this video the most important thing in life is to learn how to give out love and to let it come in we think we don't deserve love we think if we let it in we will become too soft but a wise man named levine said it right he said love is the only rational act now from this chapter what I've learned is that he is saying that he's grateful through his own sufferings and he is able to unite with the suffering of others like he never was able to do before. He gets very emotional over this thought and also says that it's okay to cry. On the second Tuesday, they talk about feeling sorry for themselves. Now Mitch asks if Mori feels sorry for himself and Mori admits that he does in the mornings. When he wakes up, he lets himself cry for a little bit and then focuses on the good things instead. Mitch thinks about all people he knows who feel sorry for themselves all the time and he says that he's lucky that he has plenty of time to say goodbye. He says, you see, you close your eyes, that was the difference. Sometimes you cannot believe what you see and you have to believe what you feel. And if you are ever going to have other people trust you, you must feel that you can trust them too. Now something that I learned from this chapter is that if we want people to trust us, then we also should trust them. Even though we are in the dark, even though we are falling apart, we should try to trust people if we want to have trust back from them. So on the third Tuesday, they are talking about regrets and we all have some regrets in our life, don't we? So in the beginning of this chapter, Mitch says, did he lament lost friends? Would he have done much differently? Selfishly, I wondered if I were in his shoes, would I be consumed with sad thoughts of all that I had missed? Would I regret the secrets I had kept hidden? And then, or replies, it's what everyone worries about, isn't it? What if today were my last day on earth? He said that Mitch, the culture, doesn't encourage you to think about such things until you're about to die. We are so wrapped up with egoistical things. Career, family, having enough money, meeting the mortgage, getting a new car, fixing the radiator when it breaks. We are involved in trillions of little acts just to keep going. So we don't get to the habit of standing back and looking at our lives and saying, is this all? Is this all I want? Is something missing? And what I learned from this chapter is that we genuinely don't have the habit of looking back and telling ourselves that what we have been doing. Instead, we just keep on going on in lives, completing the small tests and doing what we have to do. And what Morris says is correct, that until and unless we know that we are going to die or something is going to happen to us, we don't seem to ask ourselves these questions about things like, is this all that is happening in our life? Am I actually doing something good? Now we have reached to the fourth Tuesday when we talk about death. Now he talks about everyone knows they are going to die, but nobody believes it. And if we did, we would do things so much differently. He says, the truth is, Mitch, once you learn how to die, you learn how to live. Oh yes, you strip away all that stuff, you focus on the essentials. When you realize you are going to die, you see things differently, much differently. Learn how to die and you learn how to live. But this is something that resonated with me the most, is that when we believe in the fact that we are actually going to die, we start to strip off everything that is not important to us away from our lives and try to focus on what's more important. He himself does not know what spiritual development really means, 
but he knows that we are deficient in some way. We are too involved in materialistic things that don't satisfy us. The loving relationships we have, the universe around us, we take these things for granted. And it's true, we don't realize what is the importance of family, what is the importance of friends, what is the importance of people who love us until and unless we get the idea that we are going to be far from them someday or that we are going to be meeting our inevitable end. So let's get into the fifth Tuesday, which is talking about family. Now this is something that again resonated with me the most because it talks about how the fact is there is no foundation no secure ground upon which people may stand today if it is in the family. It's become quite clear to me as I have been sick, if you don't have the support and love and caring and concern that you get from a family, you don't have much at all. Love is so supremely important. And as our great poet Auden said, love each other or perish. Uh, this is a really important thing to talk about is because if you don't have love on this planet, do you really have anything? I realized two years ago that everything is bonded with the term known as love. Every single thing that you resonate with has a connection to you in the form of love. We use the term love so many times, like I love the sky, I love this, I love that. We also use the term to define our relationships with people, like for example saying that I love my friends, I love my family. and. If you try to say every single type of love is so different from each other and that is what makes love so special. Love is so supremely important and so security in the spiritual sense means having something or someone to rest upon, to depend upon for protection, for support, for needs. When I look back when I was younger, I used to believe in the fact that I should have lots of friends. I should socialize with every single person. As in itself, it seems like a really nice thing to do. Socializing is not bad. But as I grew up, I started to understand as an adult that that is physically not possible. And what you need most importantly in your life is to have a few people that you can rely on, a few people that you can lean on, a few people that will stay with you through your thick and thin. Those people who won't just have you up in your best times, but will also stand with you in your lowest times. Now we are going to talk about emotions. Honestly speaking, if I look back, Emotions are something that play a really huge part in our lives and kind of form human life in general. Now, Morris says that he's detaching himself from experience. Yes, detaching myself. And this is important, not just for someone like me who is dying, but for someone like you who is perfectly healthy. Learn to detach. You know what the Buddhists say? Don't click to things because everything is impermanent. Now, what I learned from this and how I'm incorporating this in my life is that detaching myself from every single thing that I find does not resonate with me. For example, you can start out with unfollowing all those people that you used to follow just for the sake of following back and you don't really get anything in terms of happiness, of gaining some sort of virtue, you don't really resonate with those people. Try to clean out all the toxicity from your life and try to detach. The one thing that I have learned from life is that attachment is really something that should be done carefully. If you attach yourself too much to something, then you just get to experience a lot of pain later on. So detachment is really important. Detachment from materialistic things, from people, from toxicity in your life. So don't go like if someone is behaving rude to you or if someone is like very toxic to you and you're still following them just because they were a friend to you at some point of your time, stop doing that. Start the experience of detaching yourself from people and from things that don't matter. You know what pain is, you know what love is, you know what grief is. And only then you can say, all right, I have experienced that emotion, I recognize that emotion, and now I need to detach from that emotion for a moment. The seventh Tuesday which talks about the fear of aging. Now he talks about aging like this, that it's very simple, as you grow, you learn more. If you stayed at 22, you would be always as ignorant as you were at 22. Aging is not just decay, it's growth. It's more than the negative that you are going to die. It's also the positive that you understand that you are going to die and you live a better life because of it. Even I have myself said things like, I wish I was a kid again. Why am I aging? Why do I have to do all this adulting and all these things in life? But he says that you know what that reflects? 
unsatisfied lives. Unfulfilled lives, unsatisfied lives, lives that haven't found meaning. Because if you have found meaning in your life, you don't want to go back. You want to go forward. You want to see more, do more. You can't wait until 65. Listen, you know something? All younger people should know something. If you're always battling against getting older, you are always going to be unhappy because it will happen anyhow. You can't stop yourself from getting older. So complaining about getting older is something that is just going to make you unhappy in the end. Now we talk about marriage. So what he talks about relationships and love is what resonated a lot because relationships are not just a flowery ride or a cakewalk. They involve a lot of understanding and whenever you are into a relationship, you should try to understand that some things really matter, like talking about things, you know, being communicative. We are at our second last thing to learn from, which is forgiveness, how to forgive yourself. Now, forgive yourself before you die, then forgive others. It's not just other people we need to forgive. We also need to forgive ourselves. Yes, for all the things we didn't do, all the things we should have done, and you can get stuck on the regrets of what should have happened. That doesn't help you when you get to where I am. I always wished I had done more with my work. I wished I had written more books. I used to beat myself up over it. Now I see that never did any good. Make peace, you need to make peace with yourself and everyone around you. Now sometimes I am really hard on myself. When I don't do a work that I have to do at a certain period of time that I plan to, I just keep blaming myself and I'm so harsh on myself. And that thing, I stress over myself a lot. So before going on to forgive others, always try to forgive yourself finally we are going to be talking about a perfect day and this is a question that i will ask you guys too what is a perfect day for you all what is it and when this question was asked to morris this is what he said let's see i will get up in the morning do my exercises have a lovely breakfast of sweet rolls and tea go for a swim then have my friends come over for a nice lunch I would have them come one or two at a time so we could talk about their families, their issues, talk about how much we mean to each other. Which was so simple, so average, but yet so meaningful for Morris at the time. Because right now Morris can't even do anything on his own. So just wishing for a normal day with his friends, with those people that mean a lot to him. Going on a lunch with them, talking about their families and what is important to each other. What they mean to each other is the most important thing. And we are at the end and this is something that he talks about in the end. Death ends a life, not a relationship. Morris says that we are different. When we die, we leave a legacy behind in the hearts of what we touch. In his words, death ends a life, not a relationship. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something that you can also incorporate in your lives. And if you want, you can always check out. I highly, highly recommend reading this book. This was a very short read. And I read this book in like one or two hours to the max. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell notification to get notified every single time I upload a new video and yeah, huge hug to you guys